Our lesson today is entitled Deborah and Barak. It comes from Judges, the fourth and fifth chapter. Uh, this is Sunday School Lesson, June 4, 2017. The author uh, of this book is um, not specifically named. Tradition says that the prophet Samuel was the author uh, because of the timing of this letter, uh, this, I mean, this book. Samuel fits this qualification. The Book of Judges was written um, from 1045 to about 1000 BC. It's hard to tell because of uh, the way it's been written. The purpose of the writing, the Book of Judges, uh, chapter 1 through 5, gives an account of the wars of deliverance, the, uh, beginning with the Israelites' defeat uh, of the Canaanites and their failures. God told them to kill everybody or their gods would be a stumbling block to this people. Uh, when they went in to take possession of the land that God had gave them, God gave them specific instructions to, to kill every one as they take possession because these folks had a lot of gods and, and that was these, this uh, issue. God wanted them to root those gods out as well as the people so that they would not become a stumbling block. And the crazy cycle that God's chosen people continued in, which you'll see as we progress through this life lesson, it also includes some very interesting people that we hope to explore in today's lesson. So the key verse uh, that is noted in this uh, lesson of, of, um, of um, Judges, uh, chapter 4, it actually comes from chapter 2, and we'll spend some time in chapter 2 as we pro progress. Uh, then the Lord raised up judges, who saved them out of the hands of their raiders, and yet they would not listen to the, to the judges, but prostituted themselves to other gods and worshipped them. Unlike their fathers, they quickly turned uh, from the way which their fathers had walked the way of obedience to the Lord's commands. Whenever the Lord raised up a judge for them, they were with the judge. That judge saved them out of the hands of their enemies as long as the judge lived. For the Lord had compassion on them, and they groaned under those oppressed and afflicted, uh, those who uh, oppressed and afflicted them. But when the judge died, the people turned to the ways even more corrupt than those of their fathers following other gods and serving and worshiping them. They refuse to give up their evil practice in stubborn ways. And we'll see that progress through this lesson and, and also pro uh, progress throughout the, the lessons that we have in this book of Judges. So a brief, brief summary of the book, the book of Judges, is a tragic account of how Yahweh Almighty God was taken uh, for granted by the children year after year, century after century. In Judges, they were disobedient and idolatrous, leading to their many defeats. Yet... God has never failed to open his arms in love to his people whenever they repented uh, from their wicked ways and called upon his name. Uh, through the 15 judges of Israel, God honored his promise to Abraham to protect and bless his offspring, uh, which we find in Genesis 12, 2, 3, 3. So, uh, these folks, uh, they have uh, just uh, come out of... Uh, um, Egypt and the Hebrew people were in this wilderness for 40 years. Uh, Almighty God had judged them because of their disbelief, because He told them to come take possess this land. And they went in, not recognizing Almighty God is with them and they had the power to, to overcome. <clears throat> but they, uh, they just witnessed the miraculous. They did not believe God. They just saw the plagues. They just saw the Passover. They just made it through the Red Sea. The pillar of fire cloud before them as they move throughout this uh, this this wilderness and this promise to land. And this wilderness, they seen the manna. God's glory was with them. His Shekinah glory was in the temple with them by day and night for 40 years. Yet they had unbelief, and God judged them for that. And they move now into this promise to land. So I, I parenthetically throw this cell into you uh, to show you that they have this, um, they, they have, uh, you know how small it, uh, Israel is now. Uh, but this is the land they should have gotten. And this is the most expensive property on the planet uh, where a majority of all the oil and more, a lot of the natural resources are found in this region of the world. If they had done what God said to do, this was a promised land they should have gotten. Uh, and that land was divided, and God told them to take the land from the inhabitants. 
the Canaanites and the other folks that uh, that he uh, that were there, and uh, and he promised to help them to possess the land. Uh, that he had promised him. God says, this is, I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to make sure you get what I told you. So this brings us to uh, this book of Judges and I'm going to begin in chapter one, uh, setting again. And this is a, a long setting to give you some uh, understanding about this this um, chapter four, because how do we start in chapter four and five if we don't understand where we came from? So uh, Moses has died, obviously, and uh, and Joshua now has died, had, and uh, has, has died, and the book of Judges opens in chapter uh, one. Uh, and now it came to pass the death of Joshua, the son of the son uh, Joshua, that the sons, descendants of Israel, uh, uh, Jacob, asked the Lord, "Who shall go up first against the Canaanites to fight against them?" And the Lord said, "Judah shall go up first. And behold, behold, I have given the land into his hands." And the tribe and the sons of Judah said to the tribe of the sons of Simeon, his brother, come up with me uh, into my allotted territory so that I might fight against the Canaanites. And I likewise will with you unto the allotted territory that you're going to get. So Simeon went with them and Judah went up. And the Lord gave the Canaanites and the parasites into their hands. And they st struck down and defeated 10,000 men at Bezak. Next one. And then who's up next? Um, and Caleb said, whoever attacks Kirith Athafer and the captures it, I will give him my daughter. And Ash Asha as a wife. And Othenio, the son of uh, Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, captured it. So he gave his daughter to a gave his daughter Asha as a wife. <clears throat> and who's up next to fight this to, to fight this uh, in these inhabitants? And the house of Manassas and Ephraim settled in the central portion of the land, but allowed some of the rich uh, inhabitants to to remain. <clears throat> now, didn't God tell them to take everybody out? Now, here you are, uh, Manassas and Ephraim, which you see in the central part of this uh, of this uh, promised land. Um, they did not do as God said. And Asher and Zebulon and Naphtali settled in the northern portion of the promised land, but they too allowed some of the people. Uh, some of the captive people to remain. Uh, they're not believing in the power of God, are they? Next one. So it transfers now to uh, chapter 2. And God's not happy with his people. And now the angel of the Lord, which is the messenger of God, came up, uh, which also could be God or could be uh, um, a messenger. I think this in this case, it may be God himself. Came up from Gilgad to Bartram. And he said, I brought you out of Egypt and led you into a land which I swore to give to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my uh, my covenant with you. And as for you, you shall make a covenant with the, uh, you did not, uh, you shall not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. You shall tear down their altars, but you have not obeyed me. Uh, what is this that you have done? And so I also said, I will not drive out your enemies before you, but they will be a thorn in your side, and their gods will be a snare to you. God speaks to uh, these, 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 these people, these Israelites, and he asked them to do something, and that's not what they did. And then the angel of the Lord has spoken these words to all the Israelites. The people raised their voices and wept. And so they named that place Bochum, weepers. Uh, and there they offered sacrifices to the Lord. Uh, so chapter 2, uh, 6 through 10, Joshua finally dies. And then when Joshua had sent the people away, the tribes of the Israelites, each went to their own inheritance to take the possession of the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done in Israel. <clears throat> and when Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, and they buried him in the territory of his inheritance at Timothorus, down at her Harris, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. And also all the people of that generation were gathered to their fathers in death. And another generation rose after them, who did not know, did not recognize or understand the Lord, nor even the work in which he had done in Israel. And this is kind of the same thing what happened with, with, 
uh, with um, uh, the Israelites when they were in um, in Egypt and the new Pharaoh came up and he did not know uh, Joseph. This is the same situation that these folks now did not know, did not know this history. And now when when, when their, their judge, uh, when their leader gone away, they, they've gone astray. Uh, next slide. So God is extremely upset with his people. And the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord and worshiped and served the Baals. And they abandoned the Lord, their God, their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from the gods of the people who were around them. And they bowed down to them and offered and provoked uh, the Lord to anger. And so they abandoned the Lord and served the Baals and the, that was the pagan gods of the Canaanites and Ashwats. Uh, so the anger of the Lord burned against Israel. They gave them into the hands of, and, uh, hands of the powers of the plunders who robbed them and sold them into the hands of the surrounding enemies so that they could no longer stand in opposition before their enemies. And whenever they went, uh, or wherever they went, the hand of the Lord was against them uh, for evil or misfortune as the Lord had spoken. And the Lord had swore to them so that they were seriously distressed. Next one. So God decided to send them judges. And, and, our, and our lessons uh, in these book of Judges will uh, will speak about these uh, judges. Uh, the, uh, the judges that I will teach on myself will be uh, Deborah and Barak, which is this lesson. And I will also uh, teach about uh, at, uh, Jephthah. These folks are lost their leaders, mm -hmm. and they were like sheep. They did the same crap that they had, uh, that, um, that uh, when Moses uh, was in the, uh, and they thought that Moses had died when he was up in Mount Sinai, and they made a golden calf. As soon as they got uh, in some measure of distress, distress, they were weak and foolish, and these Canaanite guys were sexual uh, gods of nature, uh, fertility gods, and these folks were made of flesh, so they followed after the flesh. But Almighty God is a, is a second, third, fourth, fifth, and a, even 15th chance, chance God. There's over 15 judges that will uh, will study in this book, beginning obviously with Othenia that I've already mentioned to you, and Ehud, as I've mentioned, and the second one in Shemgar, Deborah, Tola, Gideon, uh, J.R., and uh, Jephthah, who uh, will be the last one that I teach from. And God sent them judges. Then the Lord raised up judges to rescue them in the hands of those who robbed them. And that yet they did not listen to their judges, for they played the prostitute after their gods and bowed down to them. Uh, they quickly turned aside from the ways in which their fathers had walked in obeying the commandments of the Lord, and they did not do as their fathers. And when the Lord raised up judges for them, he was with the judge. Uh, he rescued them from the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge, for the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who oppressed and afflicted them. But again, when the judge died, they turned back and behaved more corruptly than their fathers in following and serving other gods and bowing down to them. And they did not abandon the practice of their stubborn ways, continuing in this time. You'll see the cycle. So God sent them the first judge, which is Othenio. <coughs> and uh, when the Lord, uh, uh, then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. And, and the Lord raised up a man uh, to rescue them. Uh, the people of Israel, Othenio, uh, the son of Kenaz, uh, uh, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel, and he went out to war. And the Lord gave uh, Kush the king of Mesopotamia, into his hands. And he prevailed over Cush and the men. Uh, and the land was at rest from the oppression for 40 years. And then Othenio, the son of Kenesh died. <coughs> Next. And there, there's a cycle we will see about how these these judges, uh, 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 the God is a, uh, uh, continue, allows them to go into the cycle. And I guess he's basically being, uh, uh, giving them an opportunity to change, but they're not. The cycle begins, they're disobedient. And then um, they, God sends the nation to oppress them, and they cry out to Almighty God, and God uh, um, sends them a rescue, a new deliverer, a new judge, and they do this over and over again. Uh, 
our lesson uh, even shows this this chronicle of this uh, these judges in the time where I began with Daniel, even with Deborah, uh, with Gideon, and, and on and on. And uh, and Ehud, <coughs> which is the uh, second judge, and, and he uh, was a left-handed uh, judge. And uh, the story goes to say about he was having this uh, this fight with uh, uh, Eglon, who was a Moabite king. He was a very fat man, and he went into battle him, and he had the sword taped to his uh, to his uh, not a sword, a dagger taped to his side. And when he stabbed him with his dagger, the the knife went into his flesh, uh, his fat flesh, and it, uh, this, his skin that consumed the knife in his hand. And uh, and and uh, Eder ultimately left the the scene of this battle through a window. Uh, him being uh, the next judge. And now the, uh, this brings us to our quarterly lesson. I've given you some uh, uh, some background, and maybe it'll help us as we traverse through the rest of this lesson. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching this lesson out of the Amplified because it gives a little bit more clarity for us in this particular case, and, uh, and I hope it helps you to understand uh, this lesson. It's a much longer lesson than probably many because of a lot of components to it, but we will go through it. Again, Judges uh, chapter 4, verses 1 uh, through 3. But the Israelites again did evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud had gone. Uh, so the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, the king of Canaan, who uh, reigned in Hazar. And the commander of his army was uh, Sisera, uh, who lived within Hasherath of the Hagel, the uh, then, and, uh, then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. For Jabin had 900 chariots, which is important, and we'll get into that. Uh, and had oppressed and tormented the sons of Israel several for 20 years. Next one. So these are uh, 900 chariots. So chariots in that day is more like, uh, or in that era, it's more like uh, what we would have tanks in our era. Uh, I will give you some perspective of this concept. A uh, question for you. Uh, could Almighty God help them defeat those chariots? And they're mortals and they have chariots. Can God help you defeat your enemy? Think about that. Can God? Uh, I think rhetorically, I'm asking this question, and I know the answer is uh, yes. Uh, whatever it is, God has a, has a solution to your problem. Um, you plus God is equal to the majority in every circumstance, in every uh, occurrence, in every problem that you have in your life. If you add God to it, you get the majority. Uh, I have two um, um, graphics here with the Lord, uh, God Almighty. Uh, I am reminded that the majority report is often based on human sight and earthly resources. That's those guys, you know, that's the Israelites who went into the promised land and they looked and they said, they're like giants. They were like grasshoppers. That's, they see their, 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 their visual sight. But it says, help me to be like Joshua and Caleb. I want a perspective that is based on what you have promised. You, God, have promised. And what you, God, are able to do. Amen. That's it. So this cycle begins, like I said, that uh, it goes from uh, this, these people have been evil, and then God sends them a nation to oppress them, and then they have this repentance, and then uh, God sends them a new judge, and this happens over and over <clears throat> so now, uh, Deborah is the next judge. Uh, that's our, our lesson today, Deborah and Barak. And now De Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapitha, uh, was judging Israel at that time. And she used to sit to hear and decide the speech on the palm tree uh, of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. Uh, and the Israelites came up to hear her judgments. Uh, notice she has three times. She's a prophet, a wife, and a judge. Uh, and uh, Judges 4, uh, verses 6 and 7. And now she went, now she sent word and summoned, and summoned Barak, the son of Abinoam, uh, from Kilesh Naphtali, and said to him, 
Behold, the Lord God of Israel has commanded, Go and march uh, to my table, and take with you 10,000 men of war from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun, who will draw out Sisera, uh, the commander of Jabin's army, with the chariots of his infantry to meet with you at the river of Kishon, and I will hand them over to you. Again, this is a commandment that God said that he tells this man uh, by the way of this this judge, <coughs> this man Barak, that I want you to go into, uh, and I want you to go and take Naphtali and Zebulon. Now that's important for our lesson because those are two of the ones that I gave you previously that did not root out the folks as God had told them to do. And he gives them a second chance in order to do that. And, and meet you at the river of Kishon. Now I hand them over to you. Next slide. So God said, God said again, Sisera, our commander, and King Jabin's army, who had 900 chariots, and had oppressed and tormented his sons of Israel severally for 20 years. And God says, I will draw out Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army with his chariots and infantry to meet you at the river of Kishon and I'll hand him over to you. Remember, this is what God said. And then again, this man Barak is the, is the one who has to go and do the work. So if God tells you to do something, what would you do? Would you believe God? Think about that. Judges uh, chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. And then Barak said to her, if you if you will go with me, then I will go with you. Then I will go. What? <clears throat> God told him to go, but now he says he needs Deborah to go with him. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. She says, I will certainly go with you. Nevertheless, the journey that you're about to take will not be your honor and glory, because the Lord will sell Sisera into the hands of a woman. And then, then Deborah got up and meet with uh, Barak the Kish. Isn't that interesting? This, this story, God tells him to, to do something. And God again tells him, because he failed to do what God told him to do, that this man is no longer going to be uh, the one who's going to receive the honor for this, uh, this, this battle. But a woman will be in We'll figure out who this woman is as we proceed through this lesson. Judges chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. And Barak summoned the fighting men of the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali to Kiddush. And 10,000 men went under his command, and Deborah also went with him. And now Cabra the Canaanite had separated himself from the Canaanites, from the sons of Hebor, the father in law of Moses, and had pitched a tent far away as the um, Timoth tree uh, in Santa Anthony. Uh, which is near Kadesh. And when someone told Sisera that Barak, the son of uh, Benayim, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera called together all of his chariots, 900 iron chariots, and all the people who were with him. So the chariots and his people uh, from Harshad, a half of Gaim, so the big word, <laughs> to the river of Kishon. Again, on chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. And Deborah said to Rock, Arise for the day, for this is the day when the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. Has the Lord not gone before you? So Barak went down to Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. And the Lord routed Sisera and all of his chariots and confused all of his army with the edge of the sword. Uh, before Barak, and Sisera dismounted his chariot and fled away on foot. Did it just say he just ran away? He was a, he was a leader. But Barak pursued the chariots and army to Hasherath of Athlean, and the entire army of Sisera fell by the sword. Not even one man was left. God uh, is with them. And God told them, and God fulfilled what he said he was going to do with them. Barak defeats this was 900 chariots. So uh, we'll, you'll hear a better of this, uh, a better 
rendition of the story as we get into chapter 5 and I'm going to give you an audio of chapter 5 uh, as we get through there. Uh, and chapter 5, uh, from the heavens the stars fought, uh, from their courses they fought against Sisera, the torrent of Kishan uh, swept the army away, the ancient torrent uh, uh, of Kishan. Uh, my soul will march with strength. Then the horses' hoofs beat loudly because of the galloping and the galloping of his uh, 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 demon and powerful steeds. So what happens here? This uh, this uh, this valley. Um, there is this ancient um, sea, or there's a riverbed, and uh, and uh, this torrent, which is a rain, comes down and, uh, and uh, more like a flash flood and. And uh, these chariots, these 900 chariots, get stuck in the mud, and they, they're stuck in the mud. These um, uh, Brax um, fighting men are able to take out these chariots. God is uh, again delivered them into the hands of, um, of um, to the, into the hands of Almighty God because He has uh, given them the ability to win the battle. It's God's in control, and God has uh, brought to understand this, and, and I think for us as well to understand what. When God has something for us to do, that even when we see uh, what may be in our eyes as insurmountable um, uh, an achievement to achieve, that God is in control, that God is gracious and powerful, and can accomplish the achievement in circumstance. Next slide. <coughs> uh, Judges chapter 4, verses 17 uh, through 20. And Jael had an assignment from God. So if Barak had an assignment from now, this woman. But Sisera fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Eber, the Canaanite, because there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazar, and the house of Keber, the Canaanite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord. Turn aside to me. Have no fear. So he turned aside to her and went with her into the tent. And she covered him with a rug. And he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink because I'm thirsty. And she opened the skin of milk and gave him a drink. And then uh, she covered him. And he said to her, stand at the door of the tent. And if any man comes to ask you, is there anyone here? Tell him no. So he wants her to lie on his behalf. So when God tells you to go, should you go? So I, I've extracted a few of these uh, sayings that help maybe help us to understand this whole concept. When God tells us to do something, uh, maybe it's not in our comfort zone, but God tells us to do it. The moment you're ready to quit is usually the moment right before a miracle happens, so don't give up. Sometimes God puts you on the edge of a cliff and tells you to jump. He does, I trust him. If God tells you to do something, get up and do it. Don't just question it. Do it. It's absolutely uh, very uh, I can do all things through Christ who is strengthening me. That's what it is for me. 13. Uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's it. 54, 17. <coughs> Next one. So Jael takes him out. But Jael, Heber's wife, took a tempting uh, hammer uh, in her hand and came up quietly to him and drove the peg through his temple and went through the ground and she uh, and he was sound asleep and exhausted so he died. Parenthetically, uh, women were the ones who uh, usually put the tents together as the, the, the tribes moved from uh, one place to the next place so they were very proficient uh, with um, uh, constructing the tents and obviously she was very proficient with, uh, with the tent camp. And so behold, uh, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you are seeking. And he entered the tent with her, and behold, Sisera lay dead with a tent peg in his temple. He was not his uh, So, uh, the song of Deborah and Barak. So, chapter 5 has the song of Deborah block and uh, I'm going to play it for you and it comes out of uh, I'm playing it from the Bible experience because it has this dramatic part of it and I think that you will I uh, hope you enjoy this this is counted as the oldest poem in the Bible and it is basically the story of 
Barak and Deborah. On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of Abimelech, sang this song. When the princes in Israel take the lead, when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Hear this, you kings. Listen, you rulers. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will praise the Lord, the God of Israel, in song. When you, Lord, went out from Seattle, when you marched from the land of Eden, the earth shook, the heavens poured, the clouds poured down water. The mountains quake before the Lord, the well of Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were abandoned. Travelers took to winding paths. Villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose. Until I arose, a mother in Israel. God chose new leaders when war came to the city gates. But not a shield or spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is with Israel's princes, with the willing volunteers among the people. Praise the Lord. You who ride on white donkeys, sitting on your saddle blankets, and you who walk along the road, consider the voice of the singers at the watering places. They recite the victories of the Lord, the victories of his villages in Israel. Then the people of the Lord went down to the city gates. Wake up, wake up, Deborah, wake up, wake up, break out in song. Arise, Barak, take captive your captives. Son of Abinoam, the remnant of the nobles came down. The people of the Lord came down to me against the mighty. Some came from Ephraim, whose roots were in Amalek. Benjamin was with the people who followed you. From the kid captains came down. From Zebulun, those who bear commander's stand. The princes of Issachar were with them. Yes. Issachar was with Barak, sent under his command into the valley. In the districts of Reuben, there was much searching of heart. Why did you stay among the sheep pens to hear the whistling for the flocks? In the districts of Reuben, there was much searching of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. And Dan, why did he linger by the ships? Asher remained on the coast and stayed in his goats. The people of Zebulun risked their very lives. So did Naphtali on the Tattus fields. Kings came, they fought. The kings of Canaan fought. At Tanek, by the waters of Megiddo, they took no plunder of silver. From the heavens the stars fought. From their courses they fought against Sisera. The river Kishon swept them away. The age-old river, the river Kishon. March on my soul, be strong. Then thunder the horse's hooves galloping. Galloping go his mighty steeds. Curse me, Ross, said the angel of the Lord. Curse its people bitterly, because they did not come to help the Lord, to help the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed of women be Jaya, the wife of heaven, the king. Most blessed of ten dwelling room. He asked for water and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for nobles, she brought him curving milk. Her hand reached for the tip there. Her right hand for the laborer's hand. She struck Sisera. She crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple. At her feet he sank. He fell. There he lay. At her feet he sank. He fell. Where he sank, there he fell. Dead. Through the window appeared Sisera's mother. Behind the lattice she cried out. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why is the clatter of his chariots delayed? And why is his of her ladies answer her? Indeed, she keeps saying to herself, Are they not finding and dividing the spoils? A woman or two for each man, colorful garments as plunder for Sisera? Colorful garments imported, highly imported garments for my neck. All this 
as plunder. So may all your enemies perish, Lord. But may all who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. Then the land had peace forty years. And that is a recap of this uh, chapter four in a dramatic fashion. Again, it's the oldest uh, Bible, uh, poem in the Bible, and uh, there's a beautiful uh, recount of, of the story uh, in a poetic form. And so, so the participants in the story, uh, the women, Deborah and Jael. Uh, the women are amazing. Uh, and the warriors in this story are Barak, uh, Barak, Barak, I don't even decide to pronounce it as it's way. And then there's God's people. <clears throat> and what do we know about them? What can we learn from them? And that is a hope to give you uh, somewhat in the next few slides. Uh, so the women, um, um, Deborah and Jael. Uh, Deborah was the wife, again, the prophet, and the judge. She had three, three jobs. And she had favor with God, and she was chosen by God. And um, she believed that God could do anything. And he came. And he could just understand his promises. And Jael was a wife and a tent builder and a strong woman. And she had favor with God. And she was chosen by God because it said that uh, that the, 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 the victory and that glory was going to be handed into the hands of the woman. These two women are very positive, uh, have very two, uh, positive reputations. Uh, not like most of the men in the Bible, but uh, but uh, the, these women have very positive reputations, and that's a, an amazing uh, thing about uh, them. Next one. And the warriors, uh, Barak and Barak, or sister and sister, uh, Barak may be a great warrior, but a horrible leader. I'm not confident, indecisive, uh, did not trust Almighty God. Um, and sister may be a great warrior, Maybe a great leader, responsible, and maybe trusted too much in the strength of his chariot. Um, just like a rock, they may have uh, trusted in God for the better thing for to do. And Barak let the woman take credit for his win. Uh, he needed Deborah's approval even to fight the battle which God had ordained him to win. It's a sad scenario. And this was overconfident. And then, <clears throat> He bailed on his fighting men after uh, they died in the battle. That they all died except him, and he's the one who uh, retreated. These two men had negative testimony from this story. And then there's God's people. We can imagine the situation for these stories about the judges uh, and the stories. The people are in exile and need to understand that God has not forsaken them, but has, uh, but they have forsaken God. Uh, they also needed to hear a message from God, a message of God's continuing love. These stories tell the exiles to tell the exiles to pray, and their loving God will hear their prayers and send them another deliverer who God had done before, as we see in each of the stories in this book of Judges. And God will do it again and again and again and again, such as the message of this book of Judges, and such as the message that we should recognize in our own lives as well. So what do we know about uh, Almighty God through this uh, book that we have, uh, that, uh, this chapter uh, in this book of uh, Judges that we read about that God promises are forever, that he made a promise with Abraham, uh, and he's kept that promise throughout this period of time, that God uh, does not like unbelief, that this man, Barak, could have had this uh, glory, but God, that because of his unbelief, that God uh, sent someone else to do it, just like those uh, when um, uh, Moses uh, uh, had an issue, and Moses was not able to make it in the promised land. And, and then just like these Jewish folks who, who had to go into the promised land, but they believed the, 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 the report of those folks, and God judged them all. That God judges his people who have sinned. That God is a jealous God. He does not like you going after other gods, and God's going to judge you for that. God hates sin. But God loves his people. That is an important thing for us to understand. That God also answers prayers. That every time, throughout all 15 of these judges that he, he gave them, that he hears and he answered their prayers. That God is in charge of everything. 
But even when they thought that they were fighting against an army that they could not win, they went uh, with the power of Almighty God and they were, they were victorious. But even in our sin, He answers and hears us and answers the prayers of those who have repentant hearts. I don't think that our God is, is definitely answering these prayers. And God is long suffering. And God chooses His prophets and His children. God is the one who chooses those folks. You can't learn to be a judge. You can't learn to be a prophet. God is the one who, who sends those folks to his people. And what have we learned about Almighty God? Continue. God does not choose men to do his work. He chooses, uh, not only chooses men to do his work, he chooses women too. That the women God chooses are amazing and positive throughout the Bible. God controls nature. God is almighty. God is always in control of the circumstances. And, and if you're the hero of this lesson, and you could think about yourself uh, and share with others what uh, what other things that you may have learned from this lesson. These are my observations that I'm giving to you of what I've learned from this lesson. And hope you can uh, embrace these lessons and, and learn something about God through this lesson, Deborah and Brock. So Deborah and Brock, uh, Judges 4 and 5, this message gives us a glimpse into our relationship with Almighty God and ourselves. And how we, just like the Israelites, we are such a selfish people. And we disregard, disregard uh, and uh, don't respect how incredible God is towards us. His people, we are his people. But God is a, a second chance, third, fourth, fifth. <coughs> in this case, 15 chance, God, and more. And God is amazing, incredible, almighty, and, and there's none like him. And, and this is an amazing lesson for us that we uh, we learn about these judges, we learn about Almighty God, and we learn about His attributes, and we learn about how He's been with those folks, and God is saying yesterday, today, and forever. And this is our lesson, according to the lesson today. Thank you so much.